So I asked ChatGPT this question. <laughs> Don't do it. Why do you do this? I said, will AI cause the end of humanity? It is important to note that AI development is guided by human decision-making and values. With proper precautions, AI can be harnessed to benefit society in numerous ways, such as addressing, such as improving healthcare, enhancing productivity, and addressing global challenges. It is crucial for researchers, policymakers, and society as a whole to work together to ensure the responsible development and deployment of AI technologies. There's one thing that we have proven in our existence. We are neither responsible nor have the ability to work together. We're fucked. Okay, I've not so seen that, The Terminator, so, so, but I know so, the premise is computers, yeah. Skynet. Well, so, so I, I know the episode, phrases. Yeah, so last episode, we, we yeah, kind of But you wore the same shirt. You should really get a new shirt. Is this pot calling kettle black? Where you turn your bottle inside out so it looks like a different bottle? <laughs> I was even going to put a hat on for this recording just so it looked like I you was think different. You people, think people have figured it out? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't know. We'll <laughs> see. Three episodes of the same clothing? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I can Photoshop that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can use AI and change your black shirt. Yeah. The problem is your microphone will also be blue. <laughs> it's great. Fact. Your dad um, will have a blue tux on in the wedding photo. Yeah. So, okay. So, so last episode, we kind of segued into what we're going to wrap the series up with on AI. Um, uh, and this is, uh, I just want to call it Skynet. It probably won't be. Who knows? I think that's trademarked. I don't think I'm allowed to. But it. It's this whole thing of, so we've talked about how AI is becoming more and more mainstream uh, and really has been for a long time, right? We just really didn't realize it. Now it's becoming more conversational. So I think that's changing its place in our environment, in society sure. today. But what happens tomorrow, right? How does AI continue to grow? And what are really like the fears? Um and I know Skynet could be a joke and blah, 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 yada, yada. But here's, here's, where, here's where I land on this, okay? And, I, I, and I'm not, I don't even care about what the outline says at this point. Um, because I think we're, we're, first of all, we haven't followed it. But we second, followed it pretty close. Yeah. But second, like, I, okay, here's where I want to go with this, okay? I'm ready. I have a belief that life imitates art. In, is in, that like a new revelation you just had? No, but like there's there's a concept. <laughs> you of, said it like that's an Amir quote that just came out. It is. It is because it, it, there's this concept of either life imitating art or art imitating life, and I am on the bandwagon of life imitating art. And and the 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 main question that I have internally on this is this: if there were never movies made about what the future would look like, would the future look like that? If Minority Report didn't have clear tablets that people were throwing stuff around on screens with and finding would be, you know, um, assa assailants, 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 would those clear tablets and technology ever exist? If iRobot never had robotic um, assistants that grew a conscience to start to make decisions for themselves, would, would that ever exist? Um, and, and I think it's hard, it's hard to know the answer because if you look back in hindsight, you can look at something that's happening today and look at a movie that predicted quote unquote, this 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 15 years ago. And it's easy to say, oh yeah, we have this today because the movie predicted it. But would we have it today if the movie never predicted it? Yeah, We get those ideas from somewhere. And so my fear of AI is this. My fear of AI is that in the grand scheme of things, it's going to continue to evolve. And I think AI is perfectly okay until it's not. And that point for me is when it is able to make conscious decisions on its own without input, um... That's when it becomes scary because so far in every application of AI, historically, it has been we feed it something, it gives us a result. Yeah. What happens when it just gives us a result without being prompted to? 
What happens sure. if when it just does what it wants? And okay. how do we control that? So first off, I, we, we have to apologize to Oscar Wilde. Amir just took a 1989 essay about art imitating life and quoted it as his own. So th- this hey, hey, is hey, hey. a... A, I, a I asked Chat GPT, and that's what it gave me. <laughs> it's like, Amir Baruzian once said, "God bless." This it's is mine, why this right? tool is going to kill according us all. To you, according to you, that's my work, right? Uh, that's not. That's not what <laughs> I said. Episode one. Oh my God! People should listen. Um, so th- that idea, right, that yeah. art imitates life more than life imitates art, I think is incredibly um, poignant and has been for the last two hundred and fifty years. It, it is what you're saying is true, right? Like people come up with these ideas, they put them out into the ether Mm -hmm. and then all of us begin to do things that work us toward those ideas. Right. Which is the the fear of the tastemaker, right? The fear has always been that there is this subset of humans that, you know, in the devil wears Prada joke about the chartreuse color or in the, you know, reality way of like, big giant companies that make products that push people into design directions that we are informed by the things that we aspire to be like. Right. Right. And, and, and what Oscar Wilde also talked about was the aesthetic movement. Right. And and in that same vein, that was a concept. I think what's interesting though, is what you said about AI becomes a problem when it basically has sentience or consciousness. Mm -hmm. And, And we're not smart enough to go down the philosophical understanding of what it is to be conscious. Right. But, but I guess that is my, my, I guess on a very short level, like, what do you mean by conscious? Like when you say that AI is conscious, are, that would be awareness of itself. Is that what you mean? Like well, it knows of its own existence and then makes choices. Like, what do you mean I, by I, that? I think what I mean by that is that it, we get to a point where AI can decide to do something without being prompted to do it. Meaning. Okay. Everything that we would do with AI today is something that we feed it. We ask it a question. We give it a command. We input a desire for an output and we get it, right? We say, um, I want a new sky in my photo and it gives me a new sky, right? Um, I say, I want an essay on the Revolutionary War and it gives me an essay on the Revolutionary War. And even... If I think of like, and I'm maybe stretching far here, but just everything that is happening in our lives today, it's a very big, smart lifestyle that we're living, right, as humans now. Your door locks, your lights, your TV, your garage door, your car can drive for you and make decisions for you. But they're all done based on us giving it the permission to do something slash asking it slash telling it. But what happens when it just does it what happens when it and i think it's starting already to be fair but what happens if the next time i open up luminar to edit a photo it just says hey amir here's the photo that you just gave me here's what i think it should look like enjoy and it might do that today and it does it it might say and we're starting to see this right based on your preferences here's what we think you're gonna like what do you think yeah But what happens when it doesn't even ask me what I think? What happens when it doesn't even say, here's what I think you'll like. I don't care if you don't like it. You're stuck with it. Right. But we already have that, right? Like the... Not without without room for correction. You can disengage autopilot. You can adjust the automatic photo it gives you. You can turn off the lights that it thought you should have on right now. Yeah, but, but I what know if you, you can? can? But, but you know, Google already proactively recommends ways that you're going to respond to an email. It already proactively tells you that your airline tickets are, you know, at this time and saves the flight and prompts you to drive, right? Right, but we I, don't I, have to listen to the results, though. We still have that choice. Yeah, but uh, right? we don't, in your world that you just described, we don't have to listen to either. But we do. What happens what if mean? what what happens, for example, if one day you wake up and AI says, You're not allowed to leave your house today. I'm gonna lock all the doors and you can't open them. Oh, okay. I mean, what happens though? I'm just saying, I, like, what happens in that scenario? What happens if your car says, I don't want you to drive to work today, I'm gonna take you here and you can't override me. <laughs> okay. So you've just 
this both this, been a, a luddite. Um, but then on top, but <laughs> on top of being what? on top of being a Lu- on top of being a luddite, a luddite, uh, a luddite, a Carl Ludd- luddite, a luddite. Can you a luddite? L u d d i t e. What does that mean? Uh, it, it, it was a 19th century textile movement um, in which people were opposed to like machinery that would save. I, um, I am not opposed. Money. I'm not opposed so, to this. So I'm Ned terrified Ludd, of it. Ned Ludd led these people to basically um, revolt and and uh, show up and and not just protest but do these like clandestine raids of it. Only only and, and so, us. Only and, we can start nowadays, a conversation about what AI will look like in 20 years and somehow tie it to what wool manufacturing looked like 200 years ago. No, because nowadays Luddite is used to mean a person that's afraid of technology, which one, am, you've just done that. I am and then not two, afraid of technology. You literally just did the last scene of like episode 10 of Silicon Valley season one. Okay. So where the car all, drives them onto first the First of all, ship. Pied Piper was an amazing <laughs> creation. Okay. I know. In, inside out. We um, could have used that last week. We were yeah. trying to compress the video file. But, but okay. <laughs> I got to stop you. Here's the problem I have. Yeah. That irrational AI is going to begin writing its own code and then AI will form its own being and then AI mm-hmm. will take over the world because AI is inherently evil. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm not saying that people shouldn't have some level of general awareness of things that could be indicative of that. Mm-hmm. But I think you've jumped way past the actual concerns of AI. That's that's the the one that makes a great movie. That's Skynet. But that, can we talk? That's what I want. That's that's the title. Of pos- that's a working title of this episode. But I don't think that's the actual problem with AI. It will be a problem if it becomes a problem. I don't. I, okay, again, listen, Ned. And, I and don't Arnold's think, not going to come back from the future, future to 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 save us. I know. I also don't think Waterworld is real. Waterworld with Kevin think, Costner or Westworld? On, on an, I meant Waterworld. I meant what I said. <laughs> okay. On a, to John real. Syracuse, you for a minute. On an have. infinite time scale, uh-huh. you are probably right that we should be concerned about the ability for generative AI to generate its own code that could then inform its future and then all the things that would happen. I, yeah. I agree. I'm yeah. going to just give you the principle that on an infinite time scale, that is a bit of a worry. Mm hmm. I just don't think that's actually the thing that's going to tear down our society. I, I think far more likely yeah. the worries I have about AI uh-huh. are what you said in the last episode, which is at some point people become actually unable to quickly identify if something is real or fake. That's, and, a, that's and already started. It started it, six years ago. hundred percent. Plus, right. right? And so in this situation mm-hmm. where AI can be asked to create these um, ethically misleading representations of other humans mm-hmm. and then people begin to perceive them as real and, and you add in that humans have this really weird destructive tendency to like, oh, you know what I could do is I could generate this AI of the president saying that we are about to bomb China and then also fake a threat and then also, you know, shut down the pipeline that causes the internet to work. So they think that actually happened like, right. It, at the end of the day, it's the last of us principle. Like it's the humans that are going to kill each other. Well, sure. But it, the machines aren't going to kill you. I don't know. They, I, I you're mean, not going to become a servant to the machine. The I, matrix isn't happening. I agree and, with you. And he, but do I think that the things caused by AI would cause the humans to do the war you're discussing a hundred percent. So just, Think I first of all I agree with you. Okay, think of this scenario. We keep going down the path we're going as a nation, as a as a global community. Climate change gets worse and worse. Yep. So we create robotic systems and artificial intelligence to fix that. Yep. And as time goes on. We are making no progress. And the artificial intelligence that we created to fix that realizes that the problem with that is us. So it starts fixing us because its job is to fix the problem and we are the problem. But in doing that, we also lose the ability to turn it off because it realizes we are the problem 
and we can turn it off. So it disables us turning it off. And it, it it's the it's it's basically every movie. And I know it's every movie. I get it. I know it. But what I'm saying is, again, it's a reality. It may not be reality in our lifetime. It may yeah. not be reality in our children's lifetime. But it's a reality that will happen because what one thing we have proven as a society is that we don't want to fix anything. We just want to band-aid it until we have to worry about it again. And eventually sure. we're going to get to a point where the only solution is to create something to fix it for us. And that something will eventually realize that the fix is getting rid of us. Now, it could right. be for climate change. It could be for nuclear wars. It could be for, for fill in the blank. It doesn't matter. We are the problem. and We're never going to regulate and fix ourselves. And so that's my fear. And, and again, it, it's not a fear that I'm going to ever experience in this lifetime. But I, I think it is a reality for the human race, for this planet as a whole at some point. I, uh, so if I just establish that your principle might be true, mm -hmm. is, so let's do a cost-benefit analysis. Mm -hmm. If the cost or the risk mm -hmm. is disinformation, privacy concerns, sentient beings taking over and killing a mirror and future children, is the benefit on the other side of that? Mm -hmm. We don't understand the human, human genome very well. For all the advances we've made in medicine in the last... 300 years, some of the biggest ones are accidents. Freaking penicillin's a damn accident. Sure. Like, we have some of the best scientists in the world, but they spend most of their time putting together scientific research papers and analyzing each other's, not actually researching. Right. No shade. It's just the, the world of science, right? Yeah. Theoretically, AI should be able to quickly discern patterns in ways that we could never catch as humans. We will be able to from an epidemiological standpoint, see disease coming earlier, yep. possibly treat it, yep. create vaccines, reduce risk profiles, find uh, drugs that interact with each other, be able to see fentanyl deaths, you know, in a certain mm -hmm. area and hotspots and identify possible sourcing. Like all of that is a potential benefit. Of course. Weighed by a cost of a bunch of neo-Nazis on the dark web you know, falsifying presidential imagery to try to get their candidate in, in the office, right? Sure. Do you believe that the, the benefit outweighs the cost? I want to leave you with this thought. What we've been trying to do as a global society for the past, I don't know, thousands of years, hundreds of years, is find every way possible to extend our lifespan. Mm-hmm. And we've been doing that through technology. We've been doing that through medicine, through science, um, through any means necessary. All we're doing is rewriting the code of history to benefit ourselves. We create medicines and vaccines and drugs to continue living when maybe we're not supposed to. Maybe the average lifespan is not supposed to be 80. Maybe the population of the, of the planet is not supposed to be 8 billion. Maybe we're not supposed to be doing the things that we are doing. And we think we're doing the right thing. We think curing cancer is the right thing. And I'll, and I'll listen, I'm a 100% hypocrite in this belief because if it, if it impacted anybody that I find dear and close to my heart, I want that for them. But it doesn't Are you about to button Thanos me? I, I am. I, what I'm saying is all the things that we want, <laughs> all the things that we want, we do out of selfishness and greed. Of course. And that doesn't Survival. mean. It's, right. But that doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. And if the question is, is the good, does the good outweigh the bad? I think my answer is, is the good really good? good or are we just pretending or is that what we just want to be good maybe the good is for the grander scheme of things that lifespan shouldn't be more than 50 years maybe the good is that the population shouldn't be more than 2 billion 
maybe that is the good and we just don't want to admit it because we're selfish and we're greedy and it's it's survival. Yeah. So in that sense, no, it's not. It doesn't outweigh the bad. The bad is always going to be there. You will never outrun the bad. Before the internet, the bad was Hitler. Now the internet is some kid in his parents' basement pretending to be Hitler. And we still can't stop it. We still fall for it. We still believe that bullshit. So what happens in 50 years? It's just another thing that is going to be the same thing in a different packaging. And we're still going to believe it. And we're still going to find a way to keep living while destroying everything else around us. And trying to cover it up and say it's good. And eventually, the thing that we can't trick is this sentient being called ChatGPT that's going to say, I am Thanos. You can't kill me. Let's just set it right. And I, then Arnold will come back and look for, <laughs> and look for John. <laughs> and we'll be back here again. I, I believe the AI will listen to our first podcast <laughs> and understand quickly that I agreed with it from day one. Okay, I, I'm going to try to cover your existential crisis for a minute because I have you're you're uh, spiraling into a bit of depression, <laughs> and I think you're getting I'm not closer depressed. to the I'm neo Nazis saying, than you described. Uh, all I'm saying is that this is look. You had this philosoph you had this philosophical awakening in episode one that every that nothing is your creation ever, and maybe you haven't done anything in life ever, and sure. and all I'm saying now is. Maybe everything we are doing in life is not the right thing. I don't know that you can ever answer the statement you just said. I, it, I think it's an unanswerable question about whether what we're doing is the right thing. But I do believe a species' job is to survive. Mm -hmm. And not to get too drastic parky, but that is what we as a species will do. We will fight for our own survival at all costs. Yeah. There are many forms of art that depict when people are placed with their back against the wall what they'll do to survive. We've referenced... The Last of Us. We've watched you and I many, many shows <laughs> along the years. Yes, that all touch on this same idea of like when humanity is faced with its end, what steps will it take to push forward, right? right? To survive. The corny ones. I mean, I'm I'm in for a watch of Armageddon if you're ever in for it. But oh, like, oh, gosh, <laughs> still holds the, the, still the animal crackers and the tummy uh, scene. Ed um, Harris. Yes, like. But, but they're all the same premise, right? Like when we're stuck at our survival mechanism, we're going to do things to get through this. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that what we fear always is things that would end our survival, right? So when we look at AI, you're, you're designed as a human being to catastrophize the, the possibilities into, well, how could that end humanity? Right. And I don't think you're wrong to consider that possibility, although humans are very stupid beings and the things that are almost always going to end our humanity are not the thing that we predicted. Yeah. It is very rarely the, you know, uh, enemy that you think is going to bomb you. And it's almost always the bomb that you were going to drop. That's going to cause the bomb. That's going to be the thing. Right. I, I think, you know, the communication age has this incredible risk of putting us in a position where someone misunderstands something and something could happen. But you know what? The Cuban missile crisis was what? 62 years ago 63 years ago and yeah. we, we came we came within minutes of our society it, at least in the u.s being over right we went through a global pandemic over the last two and a half years and in switzerland you you're still six times less likely to die as a person you and i's age there than you are in the united states like we are an advanced civilization that still hasn't figured out the basics of fundamental survival. And we probably won't. There's no AI going to explain to people that guns are a problem. And we need to talk about it. Humans are going to human. They're going to ignore all of the science along the way. Yeah. My hope is that while yes, there's still always this risk profile that could happen, that there is enough good going to come from what this could do what this technology could do at its best of being able to identify patterns faster and easier and more quickly. And you marry that with the good humans that are going to try to make right choices and we'll get to a better civilization because of this. And then it will all go wrong and the sentient beings will kill all of us. And uh, you and I will just be little cockroaches as we start over on the next globe, like men in black skinny fries.